G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. You'd have to agree that the automotive industry is moving forward at an alarming rate. It's almost ludicrous speed. I read somewhere once that the technology in the automotive industry changes every 27 seconds. What? Not only does that apply to things like electrical and electronic components, but also some very basic components. For instance, the water pump. We've seen changes from a basic water pump through to a plastic impeller. Nothing better than plastic, heat and vibration. Yeah, these fellas fall off all the time. Right through to electronic water pumps. I won't be discussing that one today. But how do we know if our water pump has failed inside due to corrosion or cavitation? What I want to show you today is a very quick test to ensure the integrity of the water pump and the cooling system. Generally, when we're looking for a water pump issue, it's a bearing type issue. In fact, it would sound something like this. So that's a bearing noise. And of course then there's the good old leakage side of things. You can see it coming out the bleed hole over here. But what happens when there's an internal fault? What can you do? We don't have x-ray vision, do we? Or do we? The thing is, we need a simple test to figure out if the water pump is doing its job. Has it fallen apart inside? Has that stupid plastic impeller fallen off the back? It happens and it cracks and then it won't rotate, therefore causing overheating issues or some other reason that we can't account for. So we need to be able to see behind the scenes to figure out if our water pump is doing its job. That's where this simple test comes in to prove the integrity of the water pump. I have a VT Commodore here that I'll be able to show you how to do this test. Now what we need to do is isolate the heater hoses. Uh, as you can see here, we have one on the top coming from the engine and a return one as well. And if we cruise over here, we'll be able to see the heater tap and the two hoses going onto it as well. We've got an upper one and a lower one down there. Now, one of these hoses will have uh, coolant coming from the engine, going back that away, and the other one will be returning back to the engine. We need to find one of the ones um, well, hopefully this one here will be the one coming from the engine going that way. What we're going to do is hook up a pressure gauge on it and see what sort of pressure we have with the water pump rotating or the engine running. So how do I determine which direction the flow is going? Is it coming from the engine here going off to the heater core or is this the return line going back to the engine? The only real way to figure it out is to start the engine and have a look at which way it comes out. Is it going to come here or here? And there we go. So here is our pressure going off to the heater core. So this is the one that we need to hook up to. We need to block this one off and hook up to this one. So now that I've determined that it was the top pipe pushing the flow out towards the heater core, that's where I've got my big pressure gauge on. And this fella here, that's the one that was on there. I've just got it blanked off with a bolt, no big deal. The important thing is that we have our pressure gauge hooked up to the flow side of things. Before we do any testing, we really need to top up the radiator once again. I'm just going to use some water here. It really doesn't matter because I've got to flush the cooling system anyway. So we'll top that up and we'll also leave the radiator cap off. We're now going to start and run the engine somewhere between 2000 and 2500 RPM and have a look at the pressure that's produced. At about 2000 to 2500 RPM, we should be getting roughly 70 kPa to 100 kPa. That's pretty good. She's a bit hairy, that engine, poor thing. That 70 to 100 kPa is roughly about 10 to 15 psi, which is right on the money. So according to this test, this particular water pump is flowing the coolant correctly. Simple test, hey? Just by carrying out this simple test, we can ensure that the water pump 
can circulate the coolant enough to make the cooling system efficient. I hope you got something from this brief video today, guys. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, that fella back there. Give it a like and feel free to comment down below. Don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. So until next time, guys, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.